What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we're here to talk about Starter Deck 8, the Old Force Vidramon Starter Deck. We finally have the entire set list for it. So, we've looked at all the cards we've had as they've come along. Every time a new card has been revealed, we have gone and taken a good old look at it. Would be, frankly, rude if we hadn't. But now we're in the wonderful position where we can sit and take a look at the entire deck as a whole. And I, for one, am absolutely delighted. So, let's take a gander, shall we? Translations here from the lovely folks over at Ensan Gaming, as well as the lovely folks over at DigimonGuard.dev, which by now you'd probably guessed. So starting off then, we've got a Digitama. It is Demi Vimon. On your turn, if you've got eight or more cards in hand, you get an extra 1,000 power. And I've talked about this a few times before. Even though blue has better draw than other colours, I do not think you are often going to be able to get eight cards in hand unless you really build your deck purely for draw. But then you're going to run out of room to play some of the other cards that need you to have eight cards in hand. I personally think it's going to end up being too awkward. Plus, 1,000 power... That is the default for Digitama. Frankly, if you're going to force me to have eight cards in hand to get it working, I would like a little bit more than that. But that might just be me. Incidentally, I will obviously update which of these come as two ofs in the deck. Hey, speaking of which, you only get two Gabumon in the deck. Gabumon does come along as a two of here. Now, Gabumon has got a rather nice inheritable skill, whereby while you have eight or more cards in your hand, this Digimon gets an extra thousand power. Yeah, it's exactly the same as Demi Vimon. And the thing is, when you add those skills up, you actually end up with a really, really cool extra 2,000 power. It's building life is good. But then at the same time, come on, that's an extra 2,000 power. Is that enough? I'm not sure. I'm also slightly confused as to why this is one of the two ofs in the deck, bearing in mind that it's not a particularly great card and it's just a common, but hey-ho. Dracomon comes along here. When you play it, you reveal the top three cards of your deck. You add a Digimon with Dramon in its name to your hand and place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Now, this one I like very much indeed. I mean, obviously, it depends on the kind of deck that you're playing. But if you're playing a Drummond deck, yes. This is brilliant search. It's pseudo draw, pseudo search, call it what you will. I'm a fan of this one. This one seems really good to me. We've also got a new Vmon. Now, this one is designated as a super rare, and that means you only get two copies of it. Of course, it's a little bit weird, because remember, all the starter deck cards are exclusive to the starter deck, so the rarity is purely invented, but by calling it a super rare, they get to put the fancy hollow on it, so why not? On your turn, while your opponent has a level 6 or higher Digimon, you may Digivolve into Old Force Digimon in your hand for a full memory, ignoring any Digivolution requirements. This one is awesome oh yeah it's also got an inheritable skill that says if you got seven or fewer cards in your hand you draw a card when you attack well i've told you i don't think you're gonna have eight or more cards in hand therefore i imagine most of the time you're gonna have seven or fewer cards in hand incidentally at this stage i want to combine this with the different digitama the digi egg uppermon because then when i attack if my opponent's got any digimon with no digivolution sources i'm drawing a card and there is a decent chance I'm drawing two cards when I attack with this Digimon. Now we're rolling. And ironically, now we might actually be able to get up to eight cards in hand. But I'm still a little cynical as to how often that's going to happen. This one, absolutely, I see why it's a two of. It's one of those ones that can cheat evolution by going up from a level three directly into a level six for just four memory. And it could be the old force Digimon from this deck. Or it could be the one from BT2. It's or any one that is released in the future. It is any old Force Vigramon, which makes this a very, very powerful card. And it's got a great inheritable skill as well. This is the kind of reason you want to buy the starter deck. And it is a two of, so like all the starter decks, 
you are going to need to buy two copies of this. I am sorry. Speaking of only getting two copies, you only get two copies of the Vidramon. Now, this one, when you are attacking, if you've got eight or more cards in your hand, you return one of your opponent's level three Digimon to their hand, trashing any Digivolution cards. And again, I don't think this skill is particularly good enough. I don't think you're often going to have eight or more cards in hand. You're only getting rid of a level three. Obviously, if that level three's got a play skill, that's going to end up backfiring royally. It's fine, but I don't see this as particularly good. Moving on then, we have ourselves a Cordramon as well. We are back to getting play sets here. Cordramon is a security card, but when you play it, you draw two. And this, for me, just reinvents Security Digimon. The first Security Digimon we got, the ones that came around in BT3, were supremely underwhelming to me. Because they had bad stats and, you know, you're playing 50 card decks, you get 5 in your security, so every single card in your deck has a 10% chance of being in your security. So the security cards aren't going to be in the security often enough, and when they're not, they're just vanilla cards with bad stats. Here... It is a six cost to play normally, which admittedly is expensive for a level four, but you get to draw two. So it's good for draw power and it's a security Digimon. That, ladies and gentlemen, is so much better as far as I'm concerned. That seems pretty good to me. Now, Wingdramon is also coming around here, and you get a playset of your Wingdramon. There are some reprints. We will do those at the end nice and quickly. Wingdramon is a level five blocker. Nothing more than that, nothing less than that. It is just a level 5 blocker. But you know what? It's pretty much got average stats for a level 5, but it's also got blocker. I am cool with this, ladies and gentlemen. I am absolutely cool with it. We've then got a playset of Aero Vidramon. Now, this one has jamming, which means it cannot be deleted by Security Digimon. When you attack into the Security, you are guaranteed to survive. And on your turn, while you have eight or more cards in hand, you gain security attack plus one. Bearing in mind, Vigemon lets you get rid of a level three, and Gabamon and Debbie Vimon will both get you an extra 1,000 power. If you can get up to eight cards in hand, you get some really awesome combos rolling on here, but my cynicism towards that is as high as it has been throughout the video. Moving over into level 6s, obviously we get the one you get a playset and one you get a half set. The playset is Slayer Dramon. Absolutely standard stats of 11, 3, 11. And what we've got here is when you did Javolve, you get security attack plus 1 for the turn. Which is nice. But we've seen plenty of level 6s that just have security attack plus 1. Or have it in a way which is far easier to activate. This is a one-shot deal when you did Javolve, which is still nice, but it's not as good as we've seen on some others. And then on your turn, this Digimon cannot be blocked, which actually makes me like the security attack plus one on evolution a lot more. Because generally speaking, if I've only got security attack plus one when I did Javolve, that makes me a little bit sad. It's a little bit awkward. But now... I am getting essentially one turn where I'm taking out two security cards, but I cannot be blocked. That makes me feel a lot, lot different. Now, I've only got 11,000 power. I will be taken out in the security by most level sixes and all level sevens. It's not always going to be perfect, but I like it as kind of a one shot big deal, so to speak. And then we get to Old Force Vidramon, the real headliner of the deck. Now, obviously, it's a super rare and it only comes as a two of. That's kind of the point here. But what we've got is when you did Evolve, you return one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon to their hand. And when you're attacking once per turn, if you've got eight or more cards in hand, unsuspend this Digimon. And I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, and I would dearly love to be proved wrong let's be clear i want to be wrong about this please people take this card to tournaments do well prove me wrong but i'd rather have the starter deck metal gururumon i'd rather have the other super rare starter deck blue digimon because that digimon you just unsuspend 
No ifs, buts, or maybes, you just done to spend. And sure, you don't have the skill that lets you return an opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to their hand on Digivolution, but you do just get to unsuspend. I do love that you've got the Vmon that can Digivolve up and cheat. And if you've got Edamor cards in hand, you also get all those other skills like Security Attack Plus 1 with Aero Vdramon, but I just don't think it's going to work often enough. I love Vmon, but I like it with the other All Force Vdramon. I like Unsuspending, but I'd rather have the other Metal Garurumon. I am sorry. We've then got a couple of option cards, each of which come as a playset. Victory Sword is a free cost card that unsuspends one of your blue Digimon. I could see this being a really, really good card. I mean, unsuspending is very powerful, all right? And now you get to do it more? Metal Garuramon unsuspends. I love that. The original Old Force Vigamon unsuspends. I like that. And to be fair, that's whenever one of your blue tamers becomes suspended. So there is a chance, and that's not limited to once per turn. So there is a chance you can do that over and over again. Then you add in this as well. This seems again like the kind of card which is going to make its way into a bunch of blue decks. V-Wing Blade is a six cost option card that returns an opponent's level six or lower Digimon to their hand. It's fine. It doesn't target level sevens which is awkward, but it is a six cost card that will get a devastating level six off the field. It's cool. It's not great. It's not perfect, but I do kind of like it. I think there is a little bit of mileage here with the wing blade. And then we get to the reprints. Now, remember these are alternate art reprints. So they are exactly cards we've seen before, just with different artwork. So we've got ourselves a playset of Lekmon which is a two cost to play normally, and that's the reason you play it. Two cost to play normally is good. We've got ourselves a play set of Gorillamon, and Gorillamon is a one cost to Digivolve, and again, that's why we play it. 6,000 power is pretty good for a level four, don't get me wrong, but generally speaking here, the reason we play this very simply is it is a one cost to Digivolve, and cards that are a one cost to Digivolve are generally very, very nice when they're level fours. Level 3 is less so. Level 4s, yeah, we like that quite a bit. We get two copies of Monzemon, which honestly makes me a little bit sad. Partly because I love Monzemon and partly because look how beautiful this artwork is. This is one of my favourite pieces of art we've seen in the Digimon TCG up till now. Monzemon, for what it's worth, it's cheaper than your average level 5 to play. And it's cheaper than your average level 5 to Digivolve. So for that reason, we like it a lot. And then we've got the really cool reprint, but again, it's only as a two of, unfortunately, and that is Hammer Spark. We've actually got an alternate art reprint of Hammer Spark, which, remember, up till now has only been available in the original starter deck. It is a zero-cost card that gains you a memory, which is cool. But if it comes out as a security, it gains you two memory instead. It is a really good option card that I've seen a bunch of play in a bunch of blue decks. And now you get two copies in here. Although it makes me sad that it's not a playset. But still, that's kind of cool. Overall, I don't think this is as strong as the Gallantmon starter deck, if I'm perfectly honest with you. But I do think the Vmon and Victory Sword are absolutely legit cards. And I do think Cordramon is a good security card. Those are the ones I'm looking out for being good in the future. Oh, and obviously Dracomon, if we ever see a Dramon deck, is going to be legit as well. Plus, we've got the alternate arts like Monzemon. Who could ask for more? And on a more serious note, although I do genuinely love that Monzemon... Hammer Spark being available in another deck is clearly a good thing because that is a really good card. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not convinced you're always going to have eight or more cards in hand, but this is another starter deck with some good cards in that you are going to go and want to buy two copies of. But I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what your favorite cards in there are. I want to know what you think about this deck. So let me know in the comment section, would you go nuts? Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wasi Plays.